Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, a uh, special guest this week, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, our special guest is the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett. Guess what? Pennsylvania politics and government in depth and in detail, and it starts right now. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. All right, happy Thanksgiving weekend, everyone. Well, our special guest is sitting across from me, the sometime host of this program and governor. <laughs> we'll get that out, Governor Tom Corbett. Governor, thanks for coming on. Good to see you again. All right, look, I got to start with this. Now, it's almost a year. Ah, we'll, we'll, we'll exaggerate the year a bit, a bit. Ten months. I mean, big change in life. Everybody who comes in, there's no job quite like it. There's no preparation for it. You come into the job, big surprises. You have disappointments. You have successes talk say something about well, that. Well, if you think about it, in the last year since the election, we did a, a transition. We picked a cabinet, right. uh, did an inauguration, had a nice party uh, at nighttime. Then we went and began the budget process. Gave a, a budget on March the eighth that mm -hmm. cut spending by almost two billion dollars. Uh, filled the hole in the budget, uh, the, the $4.2 billion deficit. We got uh, some tort reform. We got some property tax reform. We got mm -hmm. some unemployment compensation reform. Uh, then we found, then we got the budget done on time, 10 minutes shy of midnight on, uh, on June the and 30th. And we were all counting on that. You know uh, that Everybody was counting on that. <laughs> and I've had senators come back to me afterwards and say, wow, that was really nice. We got, it never got out that early. I right. said, we can do it earlier next year because the, right. the number in May was the same number we ended up with. And, and what else? Yeah. No well, what? The T word. No, 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 no tax increase. No, no tax increase during that. Then we we had the summer. Uh, well, we had an earthquake in there. I had back surgery in the, in the meantime, right. back in May. Uh, you had flooding, you know, two different floods uh, across Pennsylvania. Uh, we had a snowstorm in October that nobody uh, was anticipating. Um, we're back in with legislation on yeah. Marcellus. We, we've announced our position on Marcellus. There's legislation going on right. as we speak here today. Mm -hmm. uh, they, we announced our position on education. Right. And we, uh, everybody knows I support uh, privatization mm -hmm. of the uh, the liquor stores, and we're working mm -hmm. on the transportation issue, which is a complicated big, big, issue. Big, big. How about personally? Uh, and then, then we have Penn State. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that. Okay. We'll get oh, to that. Oh, and we had, and we'll we had two puppies. Yeah, but how about personally? I mean, was I mean now you got you got the security. You got to be careful. They're watching where you walk. They're watching what you do. I mean, it, how big? A ch I mean, you know, it, th that's probably the biggest adjustment. We don't drive a car anymore. Yeah. My wife, neither one of us drive a car anymore. Oh, uh, I I spent one day out with the National Guard, and we went and did they let yeah, you drive? They let me drive in a Humvee oh, uh, out on the field in the in the country of uh, Indian Town Gap. We got to shoot weapons. Uh, remember, I was in the National Guard, so I was, yeah. I was comfortable yeah. shooting the weapons. You know I got to shoot weapons I've never shot before. You know what so. the scary thing was when Ed Rendell left? It, it, it wasn't some, you know, people, some people were happy and some people were not happy. But the scary thing was he'd be behind the wheel. <laughs> remember well, and he and said and that. And I think and it was something like, <laughs> you know, maybe 30 years since he'd been behind oh the wheel. Oh, my God. You know, maybe it's, I might be exaggerating, exaggerating a little yeah. bit. But uh, it, it does, you know, it, it's in a really strange not driving. Basically, I have not yeah. driven myself on the roads of Pennsylvania now in a year. Yeah, and don't and be weird. And, and we don't want you speeding either. We no, don't want, we no, don't want we, you well, getting up we, to we, 95 or 100 miles an hour. I, I, if you notice, uh, I usually get there early. Yeah, that's uh, true. You places. were on time. You're, yeah. you're, you're, all right, look, let's go. One of the big things, look, Penn State, there are uh, sort of two lines of questioning I want to take. One is, there's been a lot of stuff out. I mean, it's every, every, almost every day there's been some story. But the one thing I want to ask you about is the committee moving forward to investigate the, uh, the sexual abuse scandal and, you know, to the degree to which there may have been a cover-up, all the details. Are you comfortable that there's going to be enough autonomy and independence? And you're used to grand juries, you know. You know about this stuff. Are you comfortable that, that it will proceed in, in the right way. Uh, absolutely. The, uh, the chairman of that committee, uh, Ken Frazier from, uh, from Merck, who's mm -hmm. on the uh, board, that's been his direction. That's what he was given. The vice chair is my uh, secretary of education. Uh, he's going to be supporting it. They know where I am on this. Right. Uh, I want them to go wherever they can go without stepping on the actual criminal investigation that is still ongoing. So there's right. a delicate balance. They are interviewing uh, individuals on the outside 
who would be uh, the individual investigators mm -hmm. on this. I know who they're interviewing. I'm very comfortable with that. I'm so not going to give you the, the no, scoop No, no, don't on have that. to, but let, me, let, but let me just get this. So, in other words, there's going to be a set of <coughs> outside investigators, no ties to mm. Penn State, no ties to the uh, sports or academic community. Is that what you're saying? That's right. And you think that, I mean, that's critical, when I you think, see right? the, When you see the names, no, I no. think that you understand. All right, so we're talking exactly. about, you know, obviously I'm not going to push you on that. Major names, major uh, prosecutors, is that safe to say? Major invent. I mean, can you go as far to say these are people who have the, these lots of experience? These are people that you will recognize the name and they have a lot of experience. Okay, all right. And, uh, but will there be, I, I, well, I'm going to come back to this. We're running out of time in this segment, but I do. But will there be faculty members and students and people like that on it, or are they well, just sort the, the of committee? And I don't have the committee makeup here that was That's announced. Right. Uh, there are a number. There are a few members of the board of trustees. There will be some representative from faculty, some representative from students, and some okay. representatives from alumni. But none of them. But will the be outside. In a, but the investigator investigators. There are people that know how to investigate. All right, we're talking with the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett. We're going to. A couple more questions about the Penn State that I don't want to get into. Uh, Marcella Shale and education reform. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by ReconnectPA.org, supporting a comprehensive transportation funding solution. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program with Tom Corbett, the governor of Pennsylvania. We're talking about the Penn State sexual abuse scandal that has taken national, if not international, importance at this point. All right, Governor, let's talk about another thing. I mean, one of the, con one of the points that have been made recently had to do with the time frame in which the investigation was going on by your office when you were Attorney General, and then for that two years, I think, when the grand jury was underway, some have said, well, why didn't you move quickly? Why didn't you prosecute the guy sooner? Why didn't you... Go through, plus, in addition to that, you have also been involved in, in, in uh, going after predators for a good bit of time. S start with that, and then we'll get to the... Well, let's start with that. I went after a predator when I was a uh, young assistant district attorney back in 1979 who had a small organization who he went out and groomed kids, uh, males and females, in, in pretty much the same way. Not a big organization, much smaller. And that has affected my thinking uh, ever since then. I've mm -hmm. always wondered what happened to those children now that they're, right. you know, well, that was 79, so that was 20-some, 30-some years ago. Uh, but, and then with the child predator unit, we saw the new way for predators to go after children was using the Internet, hiding behind the Internet. Right. Uh, not only did I start the unit, we also started an education unit. We started Operation Safe Surf. So I have always been about predators, and as soon as we can take them off the street, with a case that's going mm -hmm. to survive and right. win. Because the worst thing you want to do is rush it, pick somebody up, arrest them, and lose that case yeah. because it's very hard to ever go back again after somebody like that. So this investigation, and I can, I can only talk in the general nature because of, of my ethical obligations, right. uh, moved along as fast as we possibly could move it along. It was a grand jury investigation, so they take time. Grand jury only meets a couple days a month, mm -hmm. and they also have because other cases in front citizens, of them. I mean, these are citizens. These are citizens that come in from uh, uh, central Pennsylvania and the, right. and the one here in Harrisburg, eastern Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, right. western Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh. So your point is that it would that moving too quickly could have, in fact, endangered Jeopardi trust. Could have jeopardized is that the, the point? whole thing. I mean, could, could you have witness intimidation and all this sorts of things? There's a number of different things that, that you know. I, I will talk generally about cases like this. Right. Yeah, These kind of cases, the witnesses about. don't come forward very quickly. Yeah. They might be coming forward now that it's out there, but when you are trying to find witnesses trying to find the different cases, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to get people to admit that they have been sexually abused uh, by people, particularly people uh, of stature, of reputation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, <coughs> is, is there any, before we go, we're going to turn to some policy stuff in the next segment, is, is there any sense about how long you think this investigation will go on? I mean, I'm not, you know, is there just, or, or is it open-ended? 
Uh, let's let, let's go as you know. I did the, the uh, investigation gate. of uh, bonus, bonus gate. Bonus, bonus gate, gate yeah. turns into computer gate. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Nobody knew where that was going. It started out with a newspaper story by the Harrisburg Patriot. Right. We began the investigation. Everybody in that one again complained it took so long. Why didn't you get this done? Why didn't you move that done? I think uh, our results have been. Uh, pretty good to mm -hmm. show that if you do it correctly, you're right. going uh, to prove the case and yeah. get the convictions that you need. And as you know, we actually had uh, the former Speaker yeah. of the House, Purzell, plead guilty right. because of the case that yeah. was built. You have to do it properly. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I don't get into whether things are right or wrong. That's not my job. It's just to ask questions. I mean, on one sense, I guess I can understand some of the view of people who said, well, if it took longer than people may have some kids may have been hurt. I understand. I mean, I guess that's always going to be said, isn't it, about... about you could these, say that about any type of About case. any of these types of cases. When you and conduct an investigation, yeah. you know, you, you want to get the person off sure. the street as fast as you can. There's no reason to delay it, and there was no political, certainly no political reason for me to delay yeah. it. We wanted to oh, get it oh, you, oh, you mean because the president of Penn State and you've had differences over education? I'm only, you know, yeah, no. but, but yeah, I, I don't think anybody does that for differences over no. policy. I mean, look, if, we, if you guys fought with people, didn't like people who disagree with the policy, nobody would talk to anybody in That's Harrisburg, right? right? It's pretty That's complicated. Right. All right, we're going to run to a break. I want to talk to the Governor Marcella Shell. We've got stuff going on in each uh, chamber of the, of the legislature. I want to find out where he stands on a couple of the important items that are up for debate. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program with Governor Tom Corbett. We're going to shift in and talk a little bit of Marce Marcella Shale. Never has something become so complicated, Governor, in terms of the positions. But let's just go through. I want to go through two or three big things. Let's go through the local impact fee now out of the Senate. Uh, where where do you stand on what's going on well, with local impact fee? It, 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 it is hard to say where do I stand because as we speak, yes. the House is looking at their bill. bill. So correct. there's two different bills. I think correct. the House will pass a bill, the Senate has passed a bill to go over. The discussions will take place somewhere in the middle as these bills are, I think, being considered. Uh, I believe that the money should go to the locals, not to the state, as you well know. Right. I, I always view Harrisburg, if, if the money comes here first, they're going to take it and they're going to use it for all these other purposes and it won't address the impact that it's made upon right. those local communities. So it needs to go there. And that's why I have the counties uh, imposing it, because they can make a decision. Now, I would expect every county council or board of commissioners right. to impose it, but it will, it will go right to where and, it is and needed. And they've worked that out. The County Commissioners Association right. is, is on board now, as right. I understand. They're, they're, right. on, they're on board now. Okay, okay. go ahead. Okay. Sir. So, but a portion of it does need to come to the state. We came up with a proposed number of, of 25%. A lot of it would be used for DEP, for the uh, right. Department of Community and Natural Resources, uh, for uh, Pima, uh, for the state fire marshal to help give training there, mm -hmm. which would be really used in case there's emergencies in those areas. And some of it would be used uh, for PennDOT, for the roads in right. those areas. Pennsylvania has more state roads than just about any other, I think maybe any other state in the Union. Uh, a lot of, a lot of right those roads that. would be county roads right if you went that. down south. Yeah. Uh, so we need to address that. Um, the, the Senate version has the money going directly to the state, so obviously I'm not uh, wild about, about that, that issue. Yeah. The other issue uh, that is out there is there has to be some uniformity, and there's language in our bill that would take us back to what the law was in 1984 when it was passed by the legislature in the Oil and Gas Act for uniformity, the application of local rules so, and regulations. So, you're, you're con so you, you want some system where everything applies equally in the municipalities where the drawing's going on. You don't want complete 
control left of the local municipalities, so you get no, and, 40 and, different and, and zoning. And if the people that watch go us ahead, go sir. and look at our bill, they will see right. that we do give a fair amount to the locals uh, with local input. Uh, but here's, what, here's one of the problems that we have. We are facing competition for this industry from other states, and particularly right. from Ohio. And my friend over in Ohio, John Kasich, who's actually a Pittsburgh native, uh, is waving a bill that was passed in 2004 that says there's uniformity there uh, and that the state is the one who handles the regulation of the oil mm -hmm. and gas industry and, and drilling and piping and, and all those kind of things. And he's encouraging the industry to start moving the rigs there. The rigs provide the jobs initially. They also, if the initial jobs leave, so do all the ancillary jobs that go with it. This is the worst time for us to be seeing rigs going to Ohio. Mm -hmm. We need to have them here in Pennsylvania. Their gas is a little bit different than our gas, and it's a little more attractive because it's a wet gas, and it brings in more money because they can, they can break it down right. for other purposes. But, uh, but so are, we're uh, on a very delicate time frame right Okay, here. so, uh, I mean, as if the Senate and the House are eventually going to have to reconcile these we differences will sit down on and work local... With them all. Yeah. So, I mean, you're willing to go in between, you know, if it ends up in a... I mean, you, We're you, willing to negotiate. I get it. Okay. Well, that's a good point because obviously you've got a wide variety of views on this, and it doesn't always break down by party, it seems oh, to no. me. Oh, no. It's regional. You, I was going to say, if you have, Marcel, if you have natural gas production, you get lawmakers with similar views. Then when they don't, you get more concerned, I won't say more, but environmental concerns right. out of, like the folks down in the southeast. And you're... Do you think that this is going to pass before they leave, or you think it's going to yes. get pushed over? Yes, no, you're, I, I, you're I think about that. <coughs> I know the, uh, the leaders in both houses are hoping to have something done before they go home uh, for the holidays. All right, we'll talk about education reform in the final segment, and then I want to come back to something about uh, a Penn State thing, but we'll do that uh, as we end the show. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're talking with the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett, all right, before I get to the final, I want to ask you about something about Penn State again. Education reform, school choice, it's, as you know, controversial. They have this really scaled-down version of a bill that, you know, is not what you wanted, unless you tell me differently. It only has 50 schools in it. It doesn't look like it, it's, it's the expansive bill. No, that's wrong. No, go ahead. No, are you, 140, go ahead. 145 schools. I've heard I've I've heard this rumor too. Yeah. We've oh no! Is it forty? Is it one hundred and forty-five schools 100, in forty or forty-five school districts? I, I don't know the number of school that, districts, that, but it's one hundred and forty-five worst school, school buildings. School, school buildings, buildings. That's what it is. Okay. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, where children are uh, stuck in a school building uh, because of where they live. But I look at it as school reform. I start mm -hmm. off, and I always say, teacher evaluation. Right. We need accurate teacher evaluation. Uh, I'm, it, it's good for the teacher. And I was a teacher before I went to, to law school. And I, there are great teachers, but there aren't 99.1% satisfactory. But mm -hmm. that's what the ratings say under the evaluation so system. So you want evaluation? We start with evaluation. We, start, we then move to uh, charter reform. Because the charters need to reform. They're working. They, they, were, they were pilots, if right. you think about it. They're working, but there, there are some reforms that need to be uh, had there, including uh, uh, having a statewide authorizer uh, for those as, as one area, uh, a, more, a little more accountability. Then uh, increase the availability of uh, education income tax credits. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're for an increase in that. For an increase okay. in that. Uh, and then you go to the uh, school opportunity grant where that child can take in those 145 worst school buildings in the Commonwealth, take the money that the state gives mm -hmm. and go to a public school nearby if there's an open seat for them, a charter school if there's an open seat for them, or a private school if there's an open seat for them, so, and take it there. Let me ask you this question then. Uh, is there any, I mean, are there, is there any aspect of this, because they're still debating them, it did, a bill did pass the Senate, as you right. know, over in, is there something that would say, I, I, I won't put my name on it, is, is there some, given what you've seen in the debate with what could occur, would you be comfortable uh, we, with what we, you've We need seen? to tweak some of, of uh, Senate Bill 1, uh, 
but if we had something close to what I said, okay. I mean, the amounts of money could be a little bit different. Right. Uh, but as a package as a whole, I think it, it needs to be done. I think it can be done. I go back to, and I know this is where Governor Rendell and I get into differences, I look at results, I don't look at tests. Mm -hmm. The results are we know that, that students are dropping out. And right. we've had a terrible dropout rate for a number of years. I also then look at what is the cost of the welfare department, how much we spend in welfare, and you know, about f I'm rounding out the numbers, about 40% of the people in welfare didn't get a high school education, mm -hmm. didn't get a uh, graduate. The same number, about 40%, uh, if you round up male and female, in the correction system, didn't get a high mm -hmm. school degree. I take those two, those 40 percent, so I look at the dropout rate mm -hmm. and say, this is where we have to fix it right. if we're going to reduce right. the amount of money that we have to spend in welfare and but, the amount of money we have to spend in but corrections. You're, but just to conclude on both shale and education, given the parameters of what you see likely to occur, you, you feel that given those, you're okay with both and you can negotiate. I, I feel as good as we could possibly feel that really? we, we can get okay. something done okay. before the I want to come back holidays. to Penn. One of the big questions that keeps coming up here is Penn State <coughs> athletic program football. Should the football season be canceled? No. Those, those, those men that are on that football field did nothing wrong. Yeah. If you were there at the game on, uh, against Nebraska, I was there. It was one of the most moving moments I've ever seen when those men went out along with the uh, players from Nebraska. And, these young, and, and they didn't do anything. They didn't. Right. But the other, the other thing, wrong. what I really wanted to bring out also is, is the students. There were a couple knuckleheads on Wednesday night of that week <laughs> that, that turned over vans and, yeah. and set things on fire. And I think I saw a clip where one of them was 41. But that you ended know. quickly. It ended quickly because the students took control. Right. This is what I want to commend the students at Penn State. State, the right. leadership of Penn State, who took control. They, they had a demonstration of their own on Thursday out in front of Old Main. Uh, they, they came, they met with me after the Board of Trustees on Friday. Uh, I s sat and talked to them for quite a while, mm -hmm. and then I, I offered if they wanted to come out and talk to the press with me. They came out, I let the press ask questions. I was right. the referee. <laughs> the press asked them questions. Everybody was polite. These yeah. kids answered. But they're the ones that came to me and they said, what can we do? Yeah. And when I started giving them ideas, they said, well, we've done this and we've done that. Right. These were leaders. These are our future but, but leaders. I, we and only, that gets lost by the yeah, media. We only have these about, kids took control. about 45 seconds left. But, I mean, I, I saw the difference and the concern went back to the ki kids and child abuse where it belonged. Right. That's where it belonged. But, I, but I, Governor, I agree. I mean, Penn State's a great school. I know a lot of faculty members there. They do great work. And, and you know, Penalizing an entire school, we'll find out exactly. Am, am I right what, or am I wrong What's the old that? phrase? Throwing at the baby with the bathwater? You don't yeah. do that. All right. Look, as always, uh, thanks for coming on the program, and uh, we'll see you soon, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching this edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, stay well.